Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today I have one of the most requested videos on my channel. Since my last video over three years ago about how I got into Oxford, you guys have been asking for this again and again. So today I thought I'd finally give the people what they want and make an updated video on applying to Oxford because in the last couple of years I've definitely learned a bit more about the admissions process, learned a bit more about how things work and so I'm ready to impart that information to you. I've got my handy dandy book because I made some notes because I really want to give you guys the real low down on how you get into Oxford, how I got into Oxford and where I can help you. So this video is going to be split into two main sections. The first one is going to be me talking about my process of how I applied and the second part is me going to be giving you some tips about the process. So feel free to skip to different parts of the video depending on what you're here to watch. So the process of applying and hopefully getting into Oxford is a really weird one. It's very different from a lot of other universities, especially because other universities don't have as many stages of the application. So let's talk about each of the key six stages that there are. So first, there is thinking about applying to Oxford University. And look, you already did it. You're already one step ahead than the rest of the people. I told you this video was really going to help. Second, it's actually applying. Why am I hashtagging? Third, we're going to talk about the entrance exam. Fourth getting an interview, fifth, getting an offer, and sixth, meeting that offer. So let's start at the beginning. I first started thinking about applying to Oxford quite early on. Now this doesn't have to be reflective of how early you should be thinking. You could be about to go into year 13 or be in year seven and that's totally fine. I definitely was one of the people who started thinking about Oxford quite early on. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to study at Oxford but Let's just say watching enough Harry Potter and thinking that Oxford was Hogwarts was enough for me to want to go there. But that was all I really knew at that time. My school had almost no history of people going to Oxford. In the year above me, there were two people who got into Oxford. But before that, there wasn't anyone for about 15 years. And so there's very little support from the school in terms of trying to give you advice on how to put in a successful application. So the reality was that I was on my own for a lot of it. My school was quite US focused as I was at an international school in New Delhi. And so it wasn't really their fault they didn't know that much about how to apply to Oxbridge. I still made it through. That should already provide enough encouragement to you that you could do it too. So after I did my GCSEs, I'd, I'd done quite well in them and that's when it really truly entered my radar that Oxford was something that I could consider. I can't stress how important this initial step of thinking about applying to Oxford is because if you don't apply for the right subject, that can actually have a detrimental effect on the rest of the steps of the application. So early on, I thought I wanted to apply for physics. From year 10 to year 12, I was so dead sure on applying physics. And then when I started doing more physics in sixth form, I realized this actually wasn't the subject for me. Then I switched to maths, then economics, then even engineering for a bit. And then I realized that computer science might be the one. So the key takeaway from that is don't worry about switching around what you want to apply for. Th that early on, no one really knows what they want to do. But I did my research, went on the website, look at courses, looked at different course descriptions and then thought about the kind of things that I might be interested in studying. I then narrowed down on computer science. So in the summer between year 12 and 13, I actually went to Oxford on a random day in the summer holidays and actually visited. Now, the thing that people might not know is that even if you do miss an open day, you can always go and visit the colleges and the department at your own leisure in your own time. So my dad and I parked and rode away from the computer science department. I walked into reception and asked if there was anyone there that could help show me around because I was, I was a prospective applicant and wanted to have a look. I was introduced to this amazing person in department called Susanna. So she's one of the people that work with sort of schools and access liaising and sort of organizing all of the sort of open days to study days to any access related events with the department she's basically run. And she happened to be in at that time. So she um, met me at, in the reception, gave me a little tour of the department and me, her and my dad actually sat down and spoke for like a solid hour and a half. And I think that was one of the most pivotal points in my application process. Speaking to someone who knew tons of information was able to sort of wipe any preconceptions that I had of the process and just sort of tell me tell me the process as it is. When I left that meeting, we were just talking about general things like what the courses entail, what life at Oxford was like, whether I had the right GCSE profile, whether I had the right IB subjects, things like that. And that gave me so much confidence that someone else thought that, yes, I was doing the right thing so that, you know, I actually had a shot. Coming from a school where people didn't get in that often, one person's encouragement gave me the hope I needed to really put my all into the application. 
Moving on to the actual application process, I spent the summer perfecting my personal statement and applied to Hartford College for computer science and philosophy. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, where did this philosophy thing come from? I actually found out about the course while I was at the open day. It sounded absolutely fantastic. And considering that I'm, I was doing theory of knowledge in the IB while I was at school, I was already quite interested in philosophical ideas. This for me felt like the perfect course to blend the sort of mathematical side of things as well as the qualitative side of things. I submitted my application well before the UCAS deadline, which hopefully you should already know is the 15th of October, and then signed up to the admissions test. So Oxford was one of the five universities I ended up applying to. I applied to Oxford, um, Imperial, UCL, Durham, Warwick. I can't believe I still remember that. Now the admissions test for me was the bit that I was the most scared about because it was the bit that I felt like I had the least amount of preparation for. I know people who are on my course who went to schools that had hours of practice before an entrance exam. And also I didn't think I realized the importance of it when I was applying. Now being at Oxford, I know that the admissions test, for, especially for mathematical subjects, forms quite a big part of whether or not you're invited to an interview. So putting as much effort into that was actually paramount. My school was actually not that helpful with it because they hadn't had anyone that had sat them out before. So I found an online course that was offered by MEI, which is like the further maths thing. You could definitely find it online. I definitely would recommend it, especially if you're applying for maths because it's kind of maths focused. Um, but I was basically looking for any help that I could on the internet to try and attack some of these maths problems. Because as those of you that have looked at the mat or the admissions test in general, they're not very straightforward. They're not like an A-level exam. They're not like an IB exam. They're testing a skill set that would help you flourish on a course as opposed to any specific content. Um, although the maths, physics and, and some of the engineering exams have specific content, the, as you when you look at the questions, you'll realize exactly what I mean when I say they're not actually testing for that content. They do use that content, but they're actually testing for an underlying skill set. So then came the day for, I think it was in November, that I sat the exam and it went absolutely terribly. I remember sitting in the exam going, I really want to cry, but I don't actually have time to cry. So I think I need to just power through. Yeah, it was actually quite a sad day. I remember my dad was waiting outside because it was this remote test center in the middle of nowhere in New Delhi because um, my school wasn't a test center. And yeah, I thought it went horrifically. I remember my dad standing outside like smiling and me just going, please don't smile because this is not a smile worthy occasion. I was so dead sure that I wasn't getting an interview because the test just was not great at all. Um, but that's the thing. You just can't lose hope because you don't know what happened. So this day is etched in my memory forever. On the 27th of November, it was some ridiculously early time, like 5 a.m. I was about, I would have got up for school at around six and I remember my phone vibrating and normally I'm quite a deep sleeper and I don't wake up. But my phone vibrated, which meant an email or something. And I woke up and I had this weird feeling that it was probably something to do my interview. Even though it was a ridiculous time to get an email about an interview. And I checked it and it was, a interview invitation. I ran downstairs to wake my parents up who were both very excited. Um, but I was over the moon because for me, the mat, the entrance exam felt like the hardest part of the process. And I had finally jumped that hurdle. If you do get to this stage, really, you should be really proud of yourself because honestly, getting an interview in itself is such a big feat. I know for computer science, getting an interview, you've have you've had to beat out more than half of the candidates already. Now, the interviews themselves were held in Oxford. I was invited to Hartford College. I had a total of five interviews, which actually sounds like a lot and is, I'd say, above average. Because it's a joint honours, there's usually two interviews per college that you interview at. So I had two at Hartford, two at Balliol, which was a randomly assigned college, and then another one at Hartford on the third day. So I was there for three days and the interviews were highly mathematical in nature. There's a lot of practice and example questions out on the internet, a lot of logic puzzles, mostly mathematical, looking at some discrete math, some probability, um, but yes, very mathematical in nature. My school had told me to prepare for questions like why Oxford, why computer science, why not Cambridge? Um, really crazy questions in philosophy, but I wasn't asked any of those. In fact, most of my questions were the kind of things that would be an extension of A-level or IB mathematics. The only crazy things were probably the philosophy questions and that's because it's philosophy. And they also just wanted you to try and think outside of the box. So after I'd had the first four interviews, I wasn't expecting to have another interview because I thought they'd gone okay. You can't really tell just because of the nature of them whether they've gone well or not, because if they 
if they're going well, you might be asked even harder questions and then you might struggle with them. So you might feel like it's not going well, but then you might also just have done one question in the entire interview, but then them pushing you really hard on that question and feel like you actually made a lot of progress with their prompts. And that's also a great. So I'd say don't read too much into the interviews. I know someone who walked out of an interview and said that the interview had said, see you later. And they had taken that into, yep, I'm definitely getting in. This interviewer said he's going to see me later. And so that means I must be getting in. And that candidate didn't actually get in. So really don't think about what they're saying. These interviewers are doing like 20 interviews a day, like churning out candidates one after the other. And so are kind of exhausted and don't realise what they're saying half the time. So don't latch onto anything they say. So I came out on my fifth interview, was absolutely exhausted. It's a very draining experience as well. It's quite a weird experience. You're there with a bunch of other candidates who are kind of all competing for the same places. We are trying to be nice but you also don't want to like psych yourself out by hearing what other people are doing to prepare so it's a very weird situation but don't worry because everyone knows it's a weird situation in summary the interviews themselves were the things i was expecting some of the questions were out of the box but in hindsight they were just trying to see what i would do with questions that weren't very normal and more than anything they were just trying to see a, whether I'd be good in a tutorial situation, and B, whether I was really passionate about that subject. Once I left Oxford, I was so uncertain about how they had gone. I think as time went on, especially because it's like almost a month between you finishing interviews and you finding out, I was becoming more and more pessimistic about what might happen. And I was kind of becoming more sure that I probably wasn't going to get a place than was because, I don't know, it just felt like it was just so untouchable. And then the day came, I think it was the 12th of January or the 11th of January, and I got a letter that had said that I had received an open offer from Hartford College, which meant that I was guaranteed a place at Oxford, but they just hadn't decided which college yet. And I was absolutely over the moon. I remember I broke down, I cried, my family were crying, my people, teachers at my school were crying. Like, it was a massive feat. And I think that if anything, that should give you encouragement. You might not come from a background where lots of people get into Oxford. You might not be at a school where people are very supportive. You might not know a lot about the process. You might not have known people that weren't there before, but you can do it. And then came to meeting the actual condition. My offer was a thir was 39 IB points with a 7, um, 6, 6 at higher level, and the 7 had to be in maths. And I literally got a 7 in maths by like two marks. So <laughs> I'm really glad that happened. But meeting the offer is also another big part of that process. But if you're losing motivation, the most important thing to remind yourself is that you that this is it, you've done the hard bit. Now is the bit of them just you just proving to them that yes, I'm exactly the candidate that I that you have thought that I am. So that was my process of applying to Oxford. Now some of the main tips that I have for you. Number one, do your research. That is the biggest thing I can tell you. Know what you're getting yourself into because if you don't, if you don't know what your course is going to entail, then that will definitely be reflected on in an interview. If you knew, know exactly what you're getting yourself into by applying for physics, by applying for engineering, by applying for history, do the research, put related things in your personal statement, that will reflect very well in an interview. And if you can discuss, and if you can discuss related topics in an interview, if they do ask them in your personal statement, that is always valuable. And more than anything, even if you do get in, Oxford is the kind of place where you can't just get by. So if you're not motivated by the subject that you've applied to do, it's gonna be very hard to stick on. Like lots of people do leave because they realize that, you know what, you need to be very motivated to stick on. And I actually picked the wrong subject. So it is important that you do that that you try your best to make the right decision early on. Number two, apply early. Make sure you get all of your personal statement related issues out of the way over the summer. Make sure you apply to the entrance exam on time because if you miss that deadline, there's no going back. Number three, while we're talking about your personal statement, make sure that it is as academic as possible. Most, I'd say most personal statements are 80% academic, 20% extracurricular at the end. Oxford will not read, will not care about that, per, that extracurricular stuff at the end. Anything that is super curricular, meaning it is extracurriculars related to your subject, are fantastic because they are showing that you're going above and beyond because you're passionate about your subject. So include as much of those. That could be competitions, online courses. This is a great time to be doing things like that. Reading around the subject. Um, whatever you can do that's related to your subject that's above and beyond what you'll be doing at school is fantastic to put down. At interviews, don't get psyched out by other people. Prepare 
by going over the relevant A-level or IB stuff that you've been doing at school. Also, talking to as many people, family members, friends about your subject. The more you get comfortable talking to people about your subject, talking about why you're interested in something, explaining a concept to someone who might not take that subject to A-level or IB, or your parents, um, is a really good way to get comfortable talking to a tutor. And more than any body of knowledge, tutors are really testing and checking for whether you'll be someone that will flourish in a tutorial situation. So really practice that because that is something that really can help. And then the last tip I have is be calm. Try and enjoy the process as much as you can. It's a tough process, but you can make it out alive. Whether or not you get a place, it really doesn't matter that much. It's an amazing process to just be a part of because it takes a certain set of balls to put yourself up for that and say, look, I want to do this. Whether or not you get in, you will definitely learn a lot from the process. Um, if you do get in, fantastic. It's a great place to be. And if you don't, there are amazing other institutions out there that are also fantastic to be at. I know that if I wasn't at Oxford, I might have even had a somewhat happier university life in terms of not necessarily less work, but maybe better mental health, maybe um, more of a work-life balance, maybe spending more time with my friends at university in London if I went here. So I think there's pros and cons to everything. So don't get so caught up on Oxford that you end up stressing or psyching yourself out and then performing not as well as you would have. Just believe in yourself. Like, I really, I kid you not, I had so much internal confidence, not overconfidence, but confidence in myself when I was applying. Not because I thought I'd get in, but just because I thought that I had given it my best shot. And that's all you can do. So really just give it your best put your effort in terms of research, preparation, speaking to people, reaching out to tutors. If you come on an open day, you have a question, email a tutor, they will reply. They love speaking to prospective applicants. Um, just get involved and back yourself. That's all I have to say. Um, yeah, this video is getting, becoming quite, a, as Miranda Hart would say, a chatty ramble. Um, a chamble. So I think I'm going to end it here. But I really, really hope that this was helpful. Please do click that thumbs up button if you haven't already. It really helps the channel, really helps my videos. And click that subscribe button because I've been making a lot of Oxford related videos recently, a lot of university related videos. Um, I'm in my last year at Oxford now. I'm about to graduate my last term, tr Trinity term at home. Thank you, Miss Coronavirus. But yes, I'm at home. I'm about to graduate from Oxford University. I can't believe I'm saying that because it feels like just yesterday that I was applying. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments down below. Um, ask me any questions if you have them. Um, and yeah, I'm actually thinking about making a similar video for investment banking because I'm about to start a job in investment banking over the summer. I did an internship in it last year. So if you'd like to hear about that, do let me know in the comments down below. Again, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you'd like to hear more, see and hear more from me. Um, and also click that bell icon to get notifications. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you are and that you're keeping safe. Social distancing, if you're watching this in the future, yes, that was a thing. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.